start with Jesus every day. Moment by moment in work and play, I will start in life and starting out right. Starting with Jesus, it is a delight. Starting with Jesus, day and night. Starting with Jesus, I'm starting out right. Happy Sabbath! It's Starting with Jesus, 200th episode. Yay! And welcome to Starting With Jesus, where we want to encourage you to start everything you do with Jesus. Today is a very special Sabbath, because in this episode, we meet, reach our 200th episode milestone. And I'm so excited for that. Have you ever wondered what it'd be like for Jesus to visit his friends? Or what good conversations they'd have? Well, in today's lesson, we'll answer that question. And I can't wait to hear the lesson, but before we get to that, let's start with some singing. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine.
What's wrong? I'm trying to get all the things that I need to do today into the straw, but it's not really fitting. Well, what exactly are you trying to fit in here? Well, this sand right here represents all the little things that fill up my day, like brushing my teeth, doing my chores, going to school, and playing with my friends. And then we have the really big things, like praying, reading the Bible, doing family worship, and being kind, and going to church, and being loving. So the problem is, I have all these big important things that I know I have to get done, but then I have all these other things to do. Can you help me? Sure, I think I have an idea. So let's start the day off with the big things and put the little things to the side. Start your day with reading your Bible, praying, helping others, family worship, being kind, and loving. And then you put in the small things, like brushing your teeth and um, feeding the animals, uh, going to school, and playing with your friends. Wow, thanks so much. I really can't wait to start my day off with the really important things. No problem, you know, this challenge reminds me of a time in the Bible when Jesus visited his friends Mary and Martha. Now Mary sat down at Jesus' feet to spend time with him while Martha was running around doing all sorts of little tasks like cooking and trying to get the house ready. She was so upset that Mary wasn't helping. Jesus told Martha that spending time with him was much more important than cooking or cleaning for him. He told Martha that Mary had made a good choice. Mary wasn't being lazy, she just cared more about Jesus than anything else. She could have become very busy with all the serving and cleaning like Mary, but instead she chose to spend time with Jesus. Our time is one of the most valuable things we have. And Jesus loves it when we spend it helping others like our parents, siblings, and friends. All these things are important, but we should never put them before God. By spending time with Jesus, we not only make Him happy, but we become happier too. So boys and girls, the most important thing you can do is start your day with Jesus. Bye! Hey, it's Lindsay, and it's time to access this week's Nature Spotlight to see a nature submission that one of you has turned in. Looks like today's Nature Spotlight are pictures sent to us by the Aguayo Kids. Location, California. They told Miss Gloria that they had found these clumps of oysters and sea anemones on a Malibu shore. Since the tide was low, they dropped them back into the ocean to save them from getting dried out. How wonderful to be able to help. Awesome work, guys, and thank you for sending this in. I encourage you to get out there and notice God's wonderful nature, the big and the small that God has designed, especially for you. So grab a grown-up and go explore. And don't forget to take a picture, record a video, or make a drawing and send it to us at nature at startingwithjesus.com. I can't wait to see it! Everybody, happy Sabbath! Today we have a really cool story, but before we jump in, let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful Sabbath day you've given us, and thank you that we can come together here to learn more about you. Please help us and guide our thoughts and help us learn something we had never learned before. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, you know what? Where was Jesus born? When Jesus was born, was he born in a big hospital like we are today? No, he was born in a stable, that's right. And, you know, that's not a very elaborate place for a king, much less a king of kings. Well, when Jesus grew up, he got baptized, and then he kind of just, you know, left home. He was too big to stay home anymore. So he left, and he didn't really have a place to stay anymore. So sometimes, he, as he traveled, he'd stay with friends, or sometimes at Peter's house, or sometimes he just stayed outside. You know, he said... 
foxes have dens and, you know, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That meant he didn't have a place to, you know, go regularly like you and I do. So, there was one place in specific he loved to go. Is there one place you like to go to visit and sleep over? Maybe it's a friend's house or your grandma's house or a cousin's house. Well, Jesus had some very close friends. And, you know, they loved and trusted him and they believed he was the Messiah. And so he, you know, they opened their door so he felt comfortable going there. And it was a place where he can relax after the, you know, Pharisees tried to trick him and all that. It was just a place he could go and relax and just talk and teach them. And he really liked to go there. Can you guess whose house it was? That's right. Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. Now, when Martha heard Jesus was coming, she got so excited. She loved to plan things. She was a really good cook. And so she decided, you know, I'm going to cook all this and this. And she made out her menu and she decided where Jesus and the disciples were going to stay. And she started to plan, you know, like when she was going to make the beds. And well, Mary, on the other hand, she knew Jesus was coming and she knew that she should try to do something special for him. But she wanted to listen to him so bad because she had made so many mistakes in her life that she, you know, was weighing, should I help Martha or should I listen to Jesus? And she decided she was going to listen to Jesus. So when Jesus came, she went and she sat by his feet and she just started listening and just, just taking in every word he said. Well, Martha was cooking. She wasn't listening to Jesus. She was busy getting ready for the big meal she was going to offer Jesus. And, you know, she was expecting Mary to come and help her because, you know, back in the day, the women were the ones that cooked and, you know, Mary should be in the kitchen any minute now. And so she's cooking and Mary's not coming. And it's been two minutes and then five minutes then 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, and Mary's still not coming. And, you know, there's still a lot to be done, and Martha doesn't think she can finish it by herself in time. So she decides she needs to go find Mary. So she goes to where Jesus is, and what does she see? Mary's doing absolutely nothing, just sitting there while she's working hard in the kitchen. Well, now she's pretty upset. Are you ever upset when maybe your parent gives you more chores than a sibling? I know, I get upset sometimes. Well... Martha was pretty upset and so she marches over to Jesus and she says, Jesus, I'm working hard to get something special ready for you and Mary's doing nothing. And you know, Jesus looks at her and he really appreciated all the effort she had put into making a special meal for him. But he knew that the most important thing anyone could ever do is listen to his words. And he knew that Mary had chosen the most important thing. And so he told Martha that, you know, he appreciated her effort, but the most important thing was to listen to him and his words. And Mary had chosen the most important thing and it wasn't going to be taken away from her. You know, there's a lesson in that that we can learn. We need to not be so caught up in everything we need to do, but we need to remember that making time for Jesus and spending time with him and just taking in his words like Mary did is the most important thing we could ever do. Why don't we pray and ask Jesus to help us always, always remember to spend time with him. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us where we can learn more about you. And thank you for the lesson that Mary and Martha taught us in the story that we need to spend time with you and that that's the most important thing we could ever do. Help us to do that every day in the weeks to come and forever until we go home with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello, boys and girls. This week you learned about Mary and Martha and how Mary chose to listen to Jesus, but Martha got distracted. It's easy to get distracted. So... We're gonna make a really cool craft, it's called salt art, and we're gonna make a cross to remind us to put Jesus first in everything we do. You will need salt, paper towels, a paper plate, some school glue, the liquid kind, some watercolors with the paintbrush, and some water. Okay, the first thing you need to do is take your glue and draw a cross with it. It's important you get a lot of glue because I tried it with less glue and it, the salt will fall off if you don't have enough glue. 
So make sure, like here, probably go back and add some glue just to make sure it'll stick. So you might have to go twice over it. The more glue you put on, the longer it will take to dry though. So just keep that in mind. Um, I left mine out overnight and it dried just fine, but I didn't have enough glue. And now you can take your salt. Any kind of salt should work. This is pink Himalayan salt, but you can get other kinds of salt. And this one worked just fine. So now take some salt, make sure there's no big clumps in it, and sprinkle it over the glue. Cover it pretty good. And it's okay if you put too much, because you can shake it off later. Now I'll take off the excess salt. You probably want to have a bigger container, but this works fine. And you'll see it starts sticking to the glue, and then just pour off the extra salt. So now that you have the salt, you can take your paint brush and I'll start with blue. I haven't tried blue yet. Just wet it, get it. Watercolors worked pretty good for this. I haven't tried other uh, kinds of paint, but watercolor works fine. Make sure you get a lot of water because as you touch the salt, it'll start spreading. The more water you have, the easier it is for it to spread. You might want to add more paint because sometimes it gets diluted if you put too much water. A little bit more blue. Okay, now I want to try another color. So I'll dry off my paintbrush. And let's do red. Sweat the red a little bit. You can work your way all the way around the cross. Yeah, need more water. And it'll start spreading, which is really, really cool. And you won't see the pink anymore if you did use pink salt. Now that you're done with your cross, you can set it aside and leave it to dry maybe overnight. And then when it's done, you can look at it to remind you to start every day with Jesus. Adios! That was a very interesting lesson, right? I learned a lot. And that was a really fun craft too. Now it's time to review last week's questions and see if we got them right. Shout out to Chrysalyn, Nicholas, Leah, Nia, Isaiah, Savannah, August, Scarlett, Gideon, Liliana, Eliora, Mia, Analia, Benji, Allison, Emlyn, Audrey, Heidi, Cooper, Friada, Taylor, Lindy, Garrett, Julia, Arthur, Daniel, Clarice, Jordan, Faith, David, Benny, Denny, Ellie, Dom, Andrea, Mia, Ruby, Owen, Blythe, Avery, Gabriel, Mayjay, and Kaishin. Great job answering your questions. Hello boys and girls, it's question time for today's story, A Family Shares Their Home. Remember to email your answers at answers at startingwithjesus.com. That's answers at startingwithjesus.com. Question 1. Whose house did Jesus like to visit? Whose house did Jesus like to visit? Question 2. What was Martha doing? And what was Mary doing? What was Martha doing? And what was Mary doing? Question 3. What is the most important thing you should do? What is the most important thing you should do? Send your answer soon. Adios! Hi, this week's memory verse is Luke 10 42. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that part which will not be taken away from her. 
1042. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 1042. Happy Sabbath, friends. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 1042. Happy Sabbath from Maine! One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 1042. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Bye. Happy Sabbath. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all, <clears throat> with all your mind, and, and your neighbor as yourself. Luke 10, 27. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Happy Sabbath from Maine. One thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Bye. Happy Sabbath. One thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, verse 42. Bye, happy Sabbath. Have a blessed week. One thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part will not, which, which will not be taken away from a little 10, 42. But one thing is needful and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Bye. Chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10 42. Bye, happy Sabbath from Tennessee. Keep in touch. Finding is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10 42. Bye, happy Sabbath from Tennessee. <laughs> One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, the good part. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke chapter 10, 42. Said goodbye. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, 42. Bye, happy Sabbath. One thing, one thing is needed, is needed, and Mary, and Mary has chosen 
has chosen that good, that good part, part which, which will not, will not be taken, be taken away, away from her, from her. Luke 10, Luke 10, verse 42. Verse 42. Bye, happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Bye, Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. One thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which will not be taken away from her. Luke 10, verse 42. Bye, friends. Happy Sabbath. See you next Bye. Week. One thing is needed for, and Mary has chosen that good part. It's about to be taken away from her. Luke. 10.42 Bye, have a happy Sabbath. Bye, happy Sabbath. Today we're going to make some slime. We have eight ounces of glue already measured. Now we need one tablespoon of baking soda. Now we're going to put some food coloring in there. Now we need to stir. Now we need two tablespoons of saline. And more mixing. It's so fun and sticky! It's really hard to pull apart. When I'm done playing with it, I'm gonna pull it, put it in the bowl. Because I don't want it to stick to, to our hair or the carpet or anything it's not supposed to.
The Bible says that there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. That friend is Jesus. And we want to stay close to Jesus too. much for watching. Wouldn't it be cool if Jesus would come to our homes and make us his friends and talk with us? Well, guess what? He can and he will. Every day as we spend time with him, he comes into our homes. And another way we can have him come to our homes is by helping our moms and dads. So when your mom says, oh, please come help me with the dishes, Instead of groaning and sort of coming and not really helping happily, instead, when we say, yes, mommy, and go help her cheerfully with the dishes, that's having Jesus come into our home. Or when our dad asks us to help weed, if we go cheerfully and help him happily, that's also inviting Jesus to our homes. And Jesus wants to come talk with us like he did with his friends in the lesson. Don't forget, we have a lot of material to help you start with Jesus and invite him to your homes. That's all at startingwithjesus.com. We have seed pod devotionals, VBSs, and so much more. And that's all at our website, startingwithjesus.com. We also have an exciting program coming up that you won't want to miss. And it's called Explore the Future. It will be released on February 4th, and two videos will re be released per week. I know you won't want to miss that. So for more information, or if you want to download some free material for it that's already available, go to startingwithjesus.com slash explore. Again, that's startingwithjesus.com slash explore. And while you're there, go ahead and sign up to our newsletter. It's the best way to keep in touch of all the news that's happening at Starting With Jesus. You can also follow us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for us, the at sign and then one word, Starting With Jesus. Again, at Starting With Jesus. Before we end today, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for your amazing blessings. Help us to be your friends and invite you into our homes every day by spending time with you and being cheerful to our family and friends. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for watching. Have a blessed week and keep in touch. Bye!